Hello and welcome to part 5 of this Programming a Bush G-Code series. So I'm Mark, I am G-Code Tutor and in this lesson we're going to look at how we could finish bore this drilled hole to give us a nice surface finish so we're accurate and ready to size. And for this we're going to be using a single point boring bar. Now on the previous lesson we used a 19.5mm drill to pick drill out our bore here. Now, depending on the material, we might need to leave a little bit less meat on to clean up for a finish bore. As our bore is 20 millimeters, we've got half a millimeter of material left in our bore to remove. So that works out at 0.25 millimeters each side of the bore. So we're taking 0.25 cut. So if we're working with a hard material such as stainless steel, we might want to leave on less material to our finish bore. Okay, so let's jump in and write this G-code. So our first line is our N number. As we've spoke many times before now, this we're using as a search function, so we can quickly search to this section of the program. Then in brackets, we have our operator's note, and in our operator's note, we can add all our tooling information or some information about what this sequence is going to do. Now, some people like to add the grade of tip they're using, if we're using a tipped boring bar, and the size and even the part number of the boring bar. Now this is because of consistency. If we're using a different boring bar every time we make this part, then we might get slight differences in surface finish or dimensional accuracy. So the more information you add here, the better. It will help the operator get this part the same every time when it comes to being in a production run. And by adding all this information in the program, we can do away with setup sheets. So often on a milling machine, for example, we would have quite a few setup sheets telling the operator exactly how the job should be set up, but we can add most of that information, if not all that information, within the G-code program on a CNC lathe. This next block of code in our sequence is the safety line. Now, I'm not going to go into any detail this time on the safety line because I've discussed it in depth over the last four lessons of this series. So I don't think you need me to repeat myself yet again. To call up a tool on a CNC lathe, we use TO and then the tool number, or T and the tool number. So TO5 is tool five, and this brings down our tool that's located in position five on our turret. And the second 05 you see here is our offset geometry value. So this calls in data from the tool table that's relevant to our tool. So in our offset table, we could use offset 15, for example. So this could read 0515, but I like to keep the offset number and the tool number the same. It just makes it very easy to see exactly what's going on within our program. And you may have noticed my end number, the search number at the beginning of this sequence is also five. So we know we're using tool five. We can look at the turret and see, yep, our boring bar is in position five. So we know our search value is N5. So we just push N5 on the controls, down arrow, and the FANUC controls will search to this section of the program. So after our tool change, we use MO6, and this moves our turret into position. So tool five is live and ready to start cutting. Now it's time to set our spindle speed in RPM mode. So we're setting the spindle speed of 2200 RPM and we're using S word to define this. Now we're in RPM mode, the G97 up there back on the safety line sets this and we're using RPM mode and not constant surface cutting speed because we're not changing diameters. We're cutting the same diameter in one go. So we don't need to use constant surface cutting speed because it would always be the same. So we're using revs per minute here and MO3 turns on our spindle in a clockwise direction. Now, if you've got the tool reversed, maybe the cutting edge is facing the back of the machine, you would use MO4. So G41 is our tool nose radius compensation G-code. Now, when we're cutting on the outside of the parts, we were using G42. And because we're cutting inside here, we're using G41. So for more about which direction of tool nose radius compensation you require when using a lathe or a milling machine, pop over to my website. I've got an article on cutter compensation and I'll link that below in the description. So we're gonna start moving our tool around now. So for that, we're gonna start off by using G00. Now this is our rapid travel command. So we're gonna be moving our tool the fastest possible speed it can go with inside our machine. So X21 brings our tool down to the 21 millimeter diameter. And we've got a 20 mil bore here. So this brings us half a millimeter above that next cutting surface. 
I'll go into more about why we're coming at X21 and not X20 in a minute. So Z five millimeters there is bringing our tool five millimeters away from the front face of our part. Now remember, our datum was set at the front face, so our front face is zero. Anything plus from that is clear from the part. Anything minus from that is inside the part or cutting material. As we spoke about before in previous lessons, I like to wrap it in my tool in on two separate lines. Now this is safer in my opinion. So when we uh, do single block, when we're first running this program and we're doing a tape tryout and testing it, I can wrap it in to a safe distance before going in a little bit closer, just in case my tool is not set up correctly. So Z 0.3 millimeters brings us almost to the front face of the part there and MO8 turns on our coolant. So as we start cutting the start of this bore, I wish to do a small 45 degree chamfer on the front there, just to give us a bit of a lead in and a break edge so it's not a sharp edge. So I want a half a millimeter 45 degree chamfer. Now the way I achieve this is we wrap it in at 21 millimeters, remember, and not 20. And then we were 0.3 millimeters away from that front face. So that's important to remember because now we're coming down to X 20 millimeters, the diameter of our bore, and we're coming in in Z 0.02. So the difference in Z values there is half a millimeter and the difference in X values is one millimeter. So our tool is moving at half a millimeter on a 45 degree angle, but we're actually only removing 0.2 of a millimeter on that corner there, just to break the edge. So why is my X double the Z here? Now this catches a lot of people out. We have to remember with a lathe, we're working in diameters and not radiuses when it comes to the X axis. So that is why my X is double my Z to achieve a 45 degree angle on the front face of this bore. Now at the end of this block here, we also have a feed rate designated by F. Now the speeds and feeds in this series of lessons does not mean anything because we haven't specified what material we are cutting. So therefore the speeds and feeds are just arbitrary figures that I'm using right now, but I wouldn't use these figures in your programs because you need to work this out for the type of material you're cutting. Now, if you need to know more about calculating speeds and feeds, I have a course over on my website teaching you exactly how to do that. And it's one of my most affordable courses on the website. So there's no reason not to pop over and learn about calculating speeds and feeds. So now we've completed our breakage on the front of the bore. We're just going to finish past this bore side there. So what we're gonna do is come in at Z minus 41 to do our finishing pass to clean up this drilled surface. Now why is Z 41 and not Z minus 40? Well, we want to go just past the edge of the part to allow us some clearance. So when we part off, it's nice and clean. Now we can get all clever here and maybe add a break edge at the back of the bore also. So um, we have some options and if the bore is not cutting parallel, if we're using a plug gauge and we find a high point in the middle, we can also add a slight taper here to counteract any deviations with the tool as the boring bar goes in. With our bore finished turns now, we need to allow some relief to be able to remove that boring bar from the part without scratching over our finished surface. So we're coming down by two millimeters in X, which gives us a millimeter clearance from that surface that we've just finished boring. So X18 will bring us down to some clearance there so we can remove the boring bar. Now we have to be aware of the size of our boring bar when moving back in the X axis, so we don't break the boring bar on the other side of the bore. So now we can wrap it back out to a start position away from our part, so our boring bar is nice and safely outside the material now. So we're using a rapid move GO and we're coming back to Z 5.0 to give us five millimeter clearance. Now you may have noticed I use G0 and not G00 here. I've done this on purpose to explain that you may see G0 instead of G00. It means the same thing. It stems back from the old days when machines didn't have a lot of memory and every bit counts. So we can shorten G01 to simply G1 and G00 to simply G0. And the same with M codes, MO3 at the top there, we can shorten to M3. So you may see this in programs if you're editing someone else's program, but generally as I teach, I use the full form G code G00, but you may see it shortened to G0 also. 
Now, because we're using G41, our tool knows radius compensation, we need to turn that off once we finish cutting. So G40 turns off any cutter compensation or tool knows radius compensation that is active during this sequence. Now, like all the other sequences in this series, I'm switching over to the machine zero datum at the moment instead of our working datum. So G53 is our machine datum position. Now, when we're in this datum position, we can simply go X zero and it takes the X axis back to its tool change. It's normally its tool change position, the machine zero position, but not always. I've explained previously why I'm going to Z minus 210 and not Z zero. Z zero is fine, but if we have a sub spindle and we have long tools in the turret, we may wish to zero that tool turret back to the middle of the machine rather than over our sub spindle. So I'm using Z minus 210 millimeters just to put our turret in the middle of the machine away from any possible collisions. And MO9 turns off our coolant. So as the tool is going back to its tool change position, our coolant pumps are stopping. Now G0 is still active from the line above, so this will go in a rapid travel movement. The M code M05 stops our spindle from rotating. And M01 is our optional stop that I put at the end of every sequence. So that brings us to the end of programming a finished bore sequence. Now, if we have more meat on the bore and we wish to take a few cuts, we can use a roughen cycle to remove more material and it works the same way as an external roughen cycle. We just minus the distance we move. So more about this over on my website under the roughen cycle and I will put that link in the description below also. Now talking about my website, I have a website full of free articles teaching you how to program G-code and also my paid series of courses on there that will teach you from start to finish how to be a professional G-code programmer. So head over to gcodetutor.com to learn more about this amazing world of CNC programming.